Hello, Namaskar and very good afternoon to all the viewers watching our session. Thank you for connecting with PME Vidya channel number 9. Well, we have different mediums through which you can connect with us and one of them is NCRE official that is our YouTube channel. And a very warm welcome to all our viewers in NCRT's live interactive session. For another half an hour, we are going to discuss about a topic of mathematics and the topic is quadrilaterals. Part 4, that is a final session. It means that previously we have conducted over 3 sessions regarding this particular topic. So if you haven't watched our session, you don't have to worry about that. Because all our links are available on NCERT official. Well, uh, today's session is for class 9th students. So if you have any of the queries, feel free to write down to us at this mail ID that is flashing on your screens. dth.class9 at the rate ciet.nic.in Besides, here is a contact number that is flashing on your screen. So, you may also give us a call at 8800-440-559. And providing us more guidance in this session, we are also joined by an expert. Allow me to introduce her to all our viewers. Here we have with us Mrs. Bina Prakash, ma'am. Namaskar, ma'am. Good afternoon. Namaste. Good afternoon. Uh, happy ap afternoon to all. Good afternoon to you as well and a very warm welcome in the session. Ma'am is senior PGT Mathematics, currently serving at Campion School, has joined in from Bhopal. So you all know if you have any queries, any feedback to share with us, where all are the mediums through which you can connect with us. Our contact number, our mail ID and the comment section. So ma'am, as today we are going to discuss the part 4 of quadrilaterals. So I'll request you to please include the previous sessions also within the same session. Sure. So we may proceed. So, yeah. Actually, the chapter's name is quadrilateral. So, in this quadrilateral, quadrilateral means any four-sided closed figure. We have. So, the, the, in this chapter, we discussed about a type, particular type of quadrilateral. To start with, a parallelogram. Now, what is a parallelogram? A parallelogram is a quadrilateral. That's a four-sided figure. If each pair of its opposite angles are equal, if each pair of opposite sides are equal, if our pair of opposite side is parallel and equal, if diagonals bisect each other. So if any quadrilateral has these properties, then that particular quadrilateral is known as a parallelogram. Now in a parallelogram, in a parallelogram, a parallelogram is a rhombus. That is again a particular type of quadrilateral in it. If all its sides are equal. So we have seen this LMN, LMN O, it should have been O. LMN O, so this is a parallelogram um, with all its sides equal. So that is known as a rhombus. Another parallelogram that is a specific parallelogram where each angle measures 90 degrees. Here the measure of each angle may not be equal, but here the measure of each angle is 90 degree, then that particular parallelogram becomes a rectangle. And finally, a rectangle is a square if all its sides are equal. So that was that is what we discussed in a quadrilateral. Then we had the next part that is the midpoint theorem. Now in this midpoint theorem we had that is a line joining the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. If you have the midpoints of two sides of a triangle, this is two sides of a triangle AB and AC, they are two sides of a triangle, P and Q happens to be the midpoint of these two sides, then the line joining the two points, that is PQ, will be a line which will be parallel to the third side, that is BC, and also half of it. This was another information that we had that's known as a midpoint theorem from this particular chapter. And now if we extend this PQ to R, we find that this PQRCB is a quadrilateral which takes a particular form which is known as a parallelogram. So this becomes now a parallelogram. So in, based on these two things, we are taken few questions to conclude this chapter and that is the first question that we have is if the diagonals of a parallelogram are equal, the given is a parallelogram and then we have to prove that this parallelogram becomes a rectangle. That is in any parallelogram, if suppose its diagonals are equal, then that parallelogram becomes a rectangle. So how is this to be proved? 
Let's go back to the previous chapter of triangles. Remember, in triangle, actually we are supposed to prove that each measure angle measures 90 degrees. That's how we prove a rectangle. Every parallelogram is not a rectangle. When will it be a rectangle? If the measure of each angle is 90 degree. So you are supposed to prove that measure of each angle becomes 90 degree with the given condition that AD, AC and BD are equal. So how do we take up? What we do is, I will take up the two triangles. I have written this triangle ABD, ABD. I have split, see, I have made another triangle here, ABD. And I am taking another triangle ABC. This is the triangle, second triangle. Now, try to connect the two triangles. Is there any relation between the two triangles? Let us look for the relations. What information we have accordingly, let us decide. Now, information is ABCD is a parallelogram. So, ABCD is a parallelogram. Obviously, the opposite sides are going to be equal. Opposite side means AD and BC. So, it is mentioned here, it is equal. That's what I've written. AD is equal to BC. In bracket, I've written ABCD is a parallel because that's a property of a parallelogram. Now, what next? AC is equal to BD. Why is AC equal? That is AC, AC and BD, they are equal. Why are they given? Why are they equal? That is because it's a given information. And then, can we look for the third element of, in the two triangles? When you observe the two triangles carefully, you'll find that the third element is very clearly visible. The third side, that is AB, AB, both are the same sides, AB, AB. That means the side, AB is a side which is common to both the triangles. Hence, we get that the two triangles become congruent. So, congruence is on the basis of S, S, S criteria. So, we have S, S, S proving the two triangles congruent. Now, once the two triangles are congruent, we are aware that the remaining elements of the triangles will also be equal. So, what are the remaining elements? So, what are we actually looking for? We are trying to connect that angle D, A, B and A, B, C. So, are you going to get these two angles equal? Check it. Yes, we are going to get these two angles equal because they form the corresponding parts of these two congruent triangles. So, we have the two angles equal. Now, one more information we have that is the triangle, the side AD and BC are parallel. So, don't they form a pair of interior, uh, interior angles with this AB as a transversal? So, won't there some added to 180 degree? Yes, sir, we have done in the last chapter. Mein kiya tha. So, there is some adds up to 180 degree. That is because the side AD and BC are parallel. And therefore, since they are equal, we find that the measure of angle DAB becomes 90 degree. So, once angle DAB is 90 degree, automatically the other angle ABC will also be 90 degree. So, what do we get now? Triangle is the property here, opposite angles are equal. So, with this measure 90 degree, angle C's measure will also be 90 degree because A and C are opposite angles. Likewise, B and D are also opposite angles. Their measure also will be same. Hence, this parallelogram becomes a rectangle. So, that's the first thing that we have. Fine? I suppose I have made it very clear. Now, I move on to the next one. Now, next one is the diagonals of any quadrilateral are perpendicular to each other. The information given to us is the diagonal AC and BD, they are perpendicular to each other. So, when you join these points, we get a quadrilateral. It is any random quadrilateral we have. Then the quadrilateral joining the midpoints of the sides is a rectangle. That is, you have to prove that this side P is the midpoint of AB, Q is the midpoint of AD, R midpoint of DC, S the midpoint of BC. They form a rectangle. Now, again, as per the midpoint theorem, what do we have from here? PQ, I have written PQRS is, uh, sorry, I have used uh, the proof. PQRS is a parallelogram. What made me write the statement PQRS is a parallelogram? Because we have already discussed in the previous class, that is a quadrilateral which is formed by joining the midpoints of any uh, a quadrilateral which is formed by the joining the midpoints of any quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, we have this PQRS as a parallelogram. So, we are taking that basic information from it. Now, once we have this information, we know that PQ will be parallel to LBD. That is midpoint of AB, 
and midpoint of AD line joining is parallel to the third side of the triangle that is BD. So PQ will be parallel to BD. But isn't this the information given? The diagonal BD is perpendicular to AC. The diagonal BD is perpendicular to AC. Kuch clarification chahiye similar? It's okay? I'm audible, no? Hello? Yeah, of course, ma'am. You are audible. So, BD is perpendicular to AC. So, we combine these two statements. On combining these two statements, what we get from here is PQ will be perpendicular to AC. So, the side PQ and AC, they will be perpendicular. Now, AC is parallel to QR. AC is parallel to QR. That's the other side. And PQ is perpendicular to QR. Is because PQ is perpendicular to AC and AC is parallel, so we get PQ is perpendicular to QR. So what we have is the two sides, adjacent sides of this parallelogram, they are perpendicular to each other. That means the measure of this angle is 90 degree. So in any parallelogram, if a angle measures 90 degree, then that parallelogram is a rectangle because the rest of the angles will also be 90 degree. Just now we have seen that. So we come to know that this becomes a rectangle. Fine. So I now move on to the next question. Now, what is this information? Now, AD is the median of the side uh, of the triangle ABC. AD, the median. What is median? Median is a line which divides the side into two equal parts. These are two equal parts. BD and DC will be equal. So E is also the midpoint of side AD. A is the midpoint of side, says that AE's length and ED's length are equal. Now, we have to join, make a line such that it passes, that is, starts from B, passes through E, meets AC at F. So, this is where it F meets. So, B to E to F, we have a line, we have to produce this B, E to F. And we have to show that AF is one third of AC. AF, that means we have AC divided into three parts. The one, one part of it is AF. So how do we start this? So to start this, what we do is we draw a line DP, which is parallel to BF. Because this is to be here, already here. So we'll draw a line which is parallel to BF, that is D. Take it. Now, DP is parallel to BF. Now, let's go back to the last class. We can information. This is the line which we have constructed parallel to one side is passing through the midpoint of second side of this triangle. Hence, that line, the parallel line, that line which, which we have drawn will definitely pass through the midpoint of the other side. So, what we have is in this triangle BFC, D. P parallel to BC, D the midpoint, hence P is the midpoint of, P is the midpoint of FC. So we have this relation that is FP and PC, they are equal. Fine. Now let us take the other triangle, triangle ADP. Other from here while a triangle is the ADP. Now this triangle may what is the information that we have? We have already seen that this line is going to be parallel. It's the same line here, there is no difference. And E is already the midpoint. So, isn't it again the same theorem that we have, the converse of midpoint? That is, this line will be passing through the midpoint of the third side. So, third side kya hua apna? AP. AP ke midpoint se jayega. That is, F now becomes the midpoint of, F now becomes the midpoint of AP. So, we have AF is equal to FP. Ab ye tino ko combine, ye dono ko combine karo, what we get? AF jo hai, it is equal to FP, which is equal to PC. So that means the line segment AC has been divided into three equal parts. So obviously the first part is one third of the second. Is that clear? Of course. Yes? yes. Now shall I move on to the next? Of now, course. What is the next question? The next question is ABCD is a trapezium. Now what is a trapezium? Trapezium is a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides parallel. So you can very well see from this figure that is A, B, C, D may A, C, A, B parallel to D, C. So this is now going to be a trapezium. 
और इसमें एक इंफॉर्मेशन है दैट इज वन ऑफ द इंटीरियर एंगल्स करिस्पॉन्डिंग एंगल्स ऑल्टरनेट एंगल्स वन पेड दैट इज विच फॉर्म दैट इज फॉर्म बाय द पैरल साइड दे आर इक्वल सो दैट इज डी ए बी एंड ए बी सी दे आर इक्वल देन वी हैव टू प्रूव दैट द नॉन पैरल साइड आर इक्वल ये हमें प्रूव करना है सो वॉट वी डू इज अगेन वील गो फॉर अ कंस्ट्रक्शन वॉट इज अ कंस्ट्रक्शन वील एक्सटेंड दिस साइड डी ए एंड द साइड सी बी हम इसको एक्सटेंड कर देंगे दोनों साइड को एक्सटेंड कर देंगे एंड इट इंटरसेक्ट एट अ पॉइंट ई सो वेन इट इट इंटरसेक्ट एट अ पॉइंट ई वी गेट अ ट्राइंगल ई टी सी एक ट्राइंगल बन गया अपना एक और ट्राइंगल दिख रहा है अपना ई ए पी ना अब हमें प्रूव क्या करना है कि यू हैव टू प्रूव दैट ए डी एंड बी सी दे आर इक्वल सो हाउ विल दिस बी प्रूव फिर अपन कॉन्सेंट्रेट करें इसमें वॉट इज दैट वी हैव वॉट इंफॉर्मेशन डू वी हैव कि ये जो इंटीरियर एंगल्स है दे आर इक्वल अब ये दोनों इक्वल होने के कारण इसके जो सप्लीमेंट्री एंगल्स है ए ए ये जो एंगल है वन एंड लेट मी नेम इट एज ए लेट मी नेम दिस एज बी एंगल वन एंड एंगल ए दे फॉर्म अ पेयर ऑफ सप्लीमेंट्री एंगल्स एंड एंगल टू एंड एंगल बी दे फॉर्म अ पेयर ऑफ सप्लीमेंट्री एंगल्स so we can always connect the measures of these two angles ab isme apne paas angle hai diya hi hai angle 1 and uh, angle a and angle b are equal so what information do we get from here we get angle a 1 is equal to angle 2 so now you observe this triangle aec aec mein aapko kya dikh raha hai you have angle 1 and angle 2 are equal so if angle 1 and angle 2 are equal do you have this relation that is and side ae is equal to side be theek hai similarly ab aap wapas isme aa jaiye is wale pe we have ab i have used this relation ab parallel to dc ab parallel to dc what is the measure of the angle a and this angle d ye dono angle what will it be angle 1 angle a and bahut well, supplementary hai angle a and d with the supplementary so we get angle 1 is equal to angle d they form a pair of corresponding angle with this condition that is ab parallel to dc likewise 2 and c are also pair of corresponding angles and they will be equal because the two lines that is ab and dc they are parallel so isse kya ho jayega apne ko angle d and c is measure will also be equal तो अब देखो अब आपके पास एक रिलेशन आ गया एंगल डी एंड एंगल सी इक्वल है तो ए डी विल बी इक्वल टू सॉरी ई डी विल बी इक्वल टू ई सी एंड इसमें क्या मिल रहा है अपने को ए इज इक्वल टू बी ई सो वील सब्ट्रैक्ट दिस टू रिजल्ट दैट इज ई डी इज इक्वल टू ई सी एंड ई ए इज इक्वल टू ई बी ये दोनों रिजल्ट्स को हम सब करेंगे एंड वी गेट अ रिलेशन ई ए इज इक्वल टू ई बी इट इज ई बी सो वॉट डू वी गेट ऑन सब ट्रैक्टिंग द टू ई डी से ई ए हटा दिया ई डी से ई ए हटा दिया तो वी गेट ए डी एंड ई सी से ई बी हटा दिया तो वी गेट बी सी सो इज इन द नॉन पैरल साइड इक्वल सो वी फाइंड दैट Whenever two interior opposite angles of a trapezium are equal, they form a pair and they may become a isosceles trapezium. Fine. Right? Yes. Now, before we proceed in the conversation, I would like to bring to you a notice that uh, we still have around three to four minutes left in this session. We'll try okay. to be very precise. Okay. Now, in this, what we have is there's another question based. On it, the angle between the two altitudes of a parallelogram drawn from a one vertex, assuming that it's an obtuse vertex, you are drawing two altitudes. That is, AP perpendicular altitudes, a line which is perpendicular to one side drawn from the opposite vertex. So I am taking AP. A is a vertex, so A to P is a line which is perpendicular to BC. Likewise, A to D, uh, D uh, A to Q. is a line which is perpendicular to dc so ap and aq are the two quadrilaterals now what is this apcq apcq isn't it a quadrilateral so what will the measure of these two angles be b what is the measure of angle pcq the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral we have the sum of this is 
in this quadrilateral the sum of the angles one angle is 60 degree the other angle is 90 degree the third angle is angle pcq and the fourth angle is also 90 degree they add up to 360 degree so what will the measure of this be this is 180 so this is 180 minus 60 that will come out to be 120 degree so what is the measure of this angle it comes out to be we get this measure as 120 degree question is to find the measure of the angles find the angles of the parallelogram so now once you have this as 120 you have the rest of the angles we don't need to find bcd bcd and adc they form these two together make up come this is together 180 degree so what is the measure of angle daq daq is also opposite to d aq sorry adq from here we get angle a d c is measured as 120 minus 180 minus 120 that is the measure of this angle will be 60 degree so you can also find the measure of angle d aq how will we find the measure of angle d aq we know that this angle measures 60 degree it is 180 minus the sum of the two angles which is 90 degree plus the 60 degree so this becomes 150 and so the measure of this angle becomes 30 degree so this is 30 degree so this is how we can take up the solve question based on it okay now we move on to the next question ma'am we'll try to make it the last question of our session as we are running out of time fine 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 now look at this question if p is the midpoint of the side cd p is the midpoint of the side cd of a parallelogram abcd abcd is a parallelogram a line through c we are making a line through c parallel to E A. We join P to A and we draw a line which is parallel to it, and the two line that is the line from D A to A which is extended and the C to Q extended they meet at R. Now what is that you have to prove? That is D A and A R. D A is equal to A R. Now look at this expression. D A is equal to A R. D A is equal to A R. When do we get D A is equal to A R? We have when do we get that this is it we have in this triangle we get to know that in this triangle adc it is in triangle drc we have ap parallel to rc and p is midpoint what do we get of dc so what is that we get from here this implies a D and D A R they are equal. That is A happens to be the midpoint. So this is the converse of the midpoint from theorem. So we get this length equal. That so we have proved this first part. Now how do we prove that the C Q and Q R will be equal? How will we prove that C Q and Q R will be equal? Q R this is this is the midpoint. This will be equal. Let us go in for triangle. In triangle, uh, ma'am, I assume the rest of uh, the question will be solved by our viewers very easily by them. Uh, this is easily this can be solved. If you can prove that these two triangles are equal, of course, and we form of alternate angles. So we have this side. These two triangles will be because this side will be equal to this side. Uh, Bina, ma'am, uh, I'm so sorry to say, but we are running out of time. We cannot uh, proceed with the session. Okay, the triangles are congruent, and hence we find that. I think the rest of the query, all our viewers can solve it by themselves. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being a part of this Thank conversation you. and apprising our viewers about quadrilaterals. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah. Uh, thank you to all the viewers who have connected with us for this particular session. Now it's time to wrap up this particular session of mathematics for class nine students. But stay connected and keep watching PM E with their channels. And for another one hour, we have a session on the online training on multimedia resources for teaching, learning, and assessment. And to know more about this particular session, stay connected with NCRE and keep watching PM E with their channels. Namaskar.